In structural geology, we have this concept of true versus apparent width. And for a while, I didn't really see the purpose in having, you know, two different ways to describe width of a structure. Um, but it's, in fact, pretty useful. So let's just take this example here where we have George Geologist up at the surface staring down. And we have this outcrop here at the surface of this structure that's dipping pretty steeply. And the apparent width is just what we can observe it to be. You know, it's, it's relative to the horizontal. So assuming this is perfectly flat, you know, if you wanted to, you could even throw in some X and Y axes here. Assuming that this surface is perfectly horizontal and George Geologist just comes in and says, okay, I'll measure the length of this guy here because that's all he can do without any sort of, you know, drilling methods or geophysics to detect boundaries between these things. Um, at the surface, you know, just using field geology, he can measure the horizontal length and that's it. So he might come in here and say, okay, uh, you know, what do we have here? This length comes out to be some number and we'll call that W sub A for the apparent width, right? It's apparent because that's to humans what we see it to be at the surface or where we can see it beneath our feet. It's the same kind of thing with what in with stars, there's like apparent brightness and stuff, whole bunch of things where apparent describes it relative to how we humans might see it and assume it to be. But of course, George Geologist might not know what's below his feet here. He might not know the exact dip of this thing. So then you could go in and, you know, using different structural methods, you could determine the dip of this body here. For the sake of simplicity, I've said, let's just say it's perfectly tabular, just going straight down at a constant dip. And of course, then that dip angle, you would measure in here, you would call that theta. I don't know, you know, that's maybe 60, 70 degrees. But you'll notice that there is something, a case where we might want to know the actual width across here, perpendicular. And that's where the true width comes in. With the apparent width, it's harder to get the instant, it's harder to instantly get the volume of this thing or even the area of this parallelogram here. So what we can do with this true width, and I'll draw it up here so it's perfectly clear, you would do a line here going normal 90 degree angle to that surface. And now what we can do is bring this out here and we've got our little 90 degree triangle. I can focus in on this with W sub A here and we'll call this length here W sub T for the true width across, right? If you were to think of this thing as a rectangle, perfectly vertical or horizontal, then that's what we would just call the width of the rectangle, right? So this is the, hence the true width. So we can come in here and say, okay, we can do some simple, simple trigonometry here. If we know that this is theta, then this angle up here must also be theta. And then this here is of course gonna be 90 minus theta. So we've completely defined that triangle there. So we can go in and say, well, let's see, let's look at theta rather than 90 minus theta. We have the adjacent side here and the hypotenuse, excuse me, we have the hypotenuse here and the opposite side here. So we're gonna say that the sine of theta is gonna be equal to, that's gonna be the true width divided by the apparent width. And of course, you'll look at this and you'll say, okay, so the apparent width, now we can multiply that over to get the true width on its own. So true width is apparent width sine theta. And that's how we would find it in this case. You know, plug in whatever values you want for that thing. So you'll notice that the true width will always be less than the apparent width because we're multiplying it by the sine, or even if we use this angle here, of course, 90 minus theta, that would be a cosine. And since sine and cosine are always between negative one and one, 
that means that this thing can't be, the true width will always be smaller than the apparent width. And the degree to which it's smaller, of course, depends on what theta is. You know, we have the apparent width here. In this case, it's decently vertical, right? Like I said, that's maybe a 60, 70 degree angle somewhere in there. So it would be pretty close. But if you have something that's a lot more horizontal, you know, let's come in here and give you just a visual idea here. We have something a little bit more horizontal coming in. You know, even if the true width is still not maybe the same, it'll be hard for me to draw it the, the exact same. But you can see here, right, even if these things, their true width is similar, suddenly the apparent width at the surface looks way bigger. So it can be incredibly misleading, and that's where we really need to know the dip before we start saying anything about the structure. Because at the surface, this thing could be, you know, it could look super wide because it's something thin that's just dipping at an incredibly shallow angle uh, versus, you know, the opposite where it might appear thin, but maybe it's a little bit thicker uh, because you're only seeing that little slice where it's at the surface because it's pretty vertical. And the last thing I'll say, I mentioned volume in passing, of course. If you have a structure here, you know, importantly, if it were, say, uh, if we figured out that this was mineralized, right, this was a vein that filled in between a fault that was here previously and then it eroded away. So if this is a vein, then that's useful for preliminary stuff if you're trying to figure out how much actual ore you have, you know, uh, just look at, obviously this is pretty crude uh, to assume that the geometry is this nice, but you know, you come in and say, okay, we have a certain length along dip here we have a certain distance along the strike. And then if you know that, the volume becomes just a matter of that strike length. If we have the volume, then we might say the strike length, which is into the page. We might call that L. The dip length, which we might call, oh shoot, what might we call that? D, uh, that's along there, multiplied by then the true width, not the apparent width. The apparent width will give you an overestimate in that case. And that's bad when there's money involved. You don't want investors thinking you've got more money than you actually do because then they'll get angry at you and uh, then you're in deep trouble. You're like, uh, you end up like Brie X. That's no fun.